Hello everyone, I hope you're having a wonderful day today. We have the EU Historical Rules event for you. We have two great maps. The first map being Piper Farm, followed up by the Miller's Cornfield. Exciting to see this map, especially in an event where Steam comms cannot be used, all communications in game. Thank you to our YouTube members for the support. If you'd like to support, go beneath the video and hit the join button, and you can get perks like seeing videos before everybody else. Our teams for today, on the Confederate side, we have the Davis Brigade, the Shenandoah Valley Regulars, Hoods Division, Second Corps, Lee's French Legion, and the Jackson's Division, whereas on the Union side, we have a couple regiments. We have Second United States Cavalry, First United States Sharpshooters, 59th New York, Sixth New York, 88th New York, 4th New Jersey, 9th Corps, 20th Georgia, 6th Alabama, and the Jenkins Brigade. And with that being said, I hope you enjoy this event. And here we are live on the battlefield today. Historicals Rules event. It's going to be great. Today we got a 190-man server approximately dead even in terms of balance. Announcing with myself as Guardian Eagle today, we got Parker. Hello, Parker, uh, Sixth New York Cav, um, one of the admins for this event, and that annoying British voice you hear all of the Eagles recordings of the reenactment events. So there you go. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Slightly less annoying than Killer, though. I would, yeah, I would, right. I would add in there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, so, uh, you were strategizing with the Union during Cord, correct, for this? Mm -hmm. Yep. So, what is the Union plan that you know so, uh, of? They're kind of doing a slight two-prong attack, um, but it's a lot uh, heavily in favor of the Union right. So you can probably see now as the Union starts heading down the road, uh, they're going to be pushing, trying to take the cannons um, and set up a position of sorts yeah, there. Uh, in the meantime, you have a few dudes that are going sort of to the edge of the slow mall in the orchard, uh, just trying to keep people busy and hopefully turn a few units away from the right. Uh, the reason why this is interesting, though, is obviously HRE. There's no sprinting or bayonets till 30. So for the Union to actually take that right side, they have to really run the gauntlet, figuratively speaking, because they can't run. <laughs> but they have to try and, uh, you know, get to that right flank. Uh, as you can probably see now, I've watched that stone wall and see what they can do without the uh, safety of bayonets or sprinting. So I guess we'll see what happens with this. Indeed. It's really going to come down to the Hoods Division shots who have now just begun shooting. Pushing down this right side out in front, you have the second U.S. Cav. Uh, you also have fourth New Jersey. That is so <laughs> It's funny watching people just double-click through an open field like that. Absolutely. It's, it's kind of intriguing, though, that only some of them are going up and the rest of them are staying back. Uh, you got New York Volunteers and 20th Georgia. I wonder why they aren't pushing up, though. Yeah, this is, I won't lie, uh, sort of a symptom of Union. You'll often see it in uh, HRE and sometimes in like UEC as well, on Saturdays and Fridays. Um, there's often a little bit of disjointment between the advance. You'll see Sixth New York is going now, um, and uh, I imagine the rest of the boys might start moving. But uh, synchronization of movement uh, sometimes will let the Union down. We have good ideas, but we don't always follow through on them. In terms of the CSA guns, we got Second Corps uh, guns here. Um, you also have Second Corps holding on this stone wall, traditional CSA defense. I see some Hoods Division guns here. You have LFL uh, and their guns holding up here. Uh, Six Alabama is engaging in the corn. You also have 59th New York uh, here as well with red. Uh, over here, you see, did the Union get off the guns? Uh, I don't know where the JB boys are right now, but I believe their intention was to try and take the CSA guns. I'll try oh, and find them real quick. right. Ah, here they come, here they come. They're running for the guns now, right through the field alongside the 20th Georgia. What a combination right there. <laughs> <laughs> the 20th Georgia are the iron guard for the Russian artillerists. This is beautiful. Hey, only oh, in HRE, only died. in HRE. <laughs> <laughs> They're out of the cannons, to be fair. They might be able to start turning the knees and blast yeah. some canister. I... Where are you going to turn these guns, though? I mean, I guess you can turn them towards where Second Corps is at that barn. It's a very awkward shot because there's so much, uh, there's so much just in the way. You got all the caissons and limbers. It's a slight hill as well. Uh, I imagine if they keep going backwards and then start hooking it left, maybe they'll try and turn it up towards the hay bales or something like that. Might be able to pick off a few that way. But um, it is a difficult shot just because of the gradient there. Yeah. Oh, are they, they going to turn the gun? Or are they just going to keep going? You know what? I think they're stealing it. They're taking it back they're to just... uh, Washington. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough, fair Need, enough. Needs must. It's only 1862. The Union needs all the help they can get. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
I mean, yeah. One of these union groups, probably the 59th New York, could actually probably move off this left side because most of the CSA is focused on this union group. Really, only LFL is over on the orchard. But. Yeah, absolutely. I think there's a little bit too much strength on that left right now. You're definitely right. They're pushing it to Lena, or even on the hard right to try and deal with. I guess it's still Hoods on the hard right. That uh, causing some real big issues for the union. That might be helpful. Uh, it looks like Union actually put it out now, in oh, fact, from the cannon, so they've given it up. Oh, At least half of them are. That's an interesting decision this early. I mean, you spent all that time double-clicking up there, I mean... <laughs> I think... Yeah, I mean, you've, you've kind of invested now, right? You've, you've invested the ticket deaths. I feel like you almost have to try and hold it for a little longer and see what you can do, but now they're kind of back to square one from the first movement, so... Uh, yeah, I mean... you. You're down a decent amount of tickets, too. Maybe they think, oh, we're getting shot up too much. We should hit them in another direction, maybe go over to the corn, but... Mm. Um, 20th yeah, George is staying up, though. That's a good... That's This is what I love about 20th Georgian, man. They're, they're often like a snowball unit. You leave them there, and they stay there, you know? <laughs> you can look away, and like 10 minutes later, they're still there, often in double ranks. Looks like a lot... Right now, they've taken quite a few licks, so it's going to take them a moment. But, uh... They're one of the units that you leave them to it, and they form beautiful double ranks in the middle of a field where you'd never expect it. So. 20th Georgia is great. They're, they're just moving those guns back. I mean... They're still going. They are still going. <laughs> I guess if they're on the Union side out of line, then the CSA can't use it. So fair play, Schumacher. Keep it up. <laughs> but the thing is... I mean, there's still three guns there, unless they're trying to drive them all away. I, they're definitely going to use them, because they, they wouldn't take a case on if they... I, I just wonder where they're going to shoot it. I can only imagine they're going to halt somewhere in line where you see where the corner of the snake's fences are. Maybe if they halt it there and spin it 180, and start firing back up with, like, case at the base of the uh, CSA line now. Maybe that's their plan. Um, but yeah, that's a long way to go with the cannons, so it's a big investment. Hopefully it pays off for them. Oh, and as you speak of that, a limber just gets by the shot. <laughs> Counter battery. <laughs> oh, was it not told by this side? Fair enough. <laughs> uh, 20th Georgia pulling out now. You can see more unions starting to shift right as HG is kind of pushing closer and closer to unit spawn. That being uh, six New York and the fourth New Jersey. Yeah, I feel like at this point, if the Union's not going to go for them cannons, they'd be better off investing a hard push down that right. Maybe try and knock out Hoods, and then hold the Stonewall for a bit. Because uh, right now, we're pretty much as if we just started the game again, and Union started moving right, but CSA's already set up. Exactly, and Hoods Division's kind of given up this one side of the stone wall too, and Union... I can't, granted, you can't sprint, and so that might uh, let them adjust quickly, but... I mean, you could spin around to this stone wall and get nice shots. Yeah. Hoods are a great unit. Um, there's no doubt about that. But by themselves, uh, against potentially half of the Union, if the Union spotted it's just one unit facing them, that would be a pretty good way to level out the tickets a bit here. Because the Union is behind by a big margin right now as the attackers, which is never a good sign. And this this is going to be huge for the Union. It's just that slow trickle down. Um... See, it looks like one of these groups in the corn is shifting a little further right. 59th New York looks like they're just trying to get some better shots, but um, that whole infantry line is trying to shoot the artillery, I think? The Union artillery for uh, where are they in? Sick for Alabama just caught a heavy artillery shot there as well on the hard left. I won't lie, I think they're, uh, they're focusing. Well, you've got Sick for Alabama here. You've got Knife Claw Steel here as well. And then you got 59th spread along the wall. Pretty much hard left, center, and right. But for the most part, they're all shooting at... Who is this CSA unit up here? You've got LFL, LFL guarding their cannons. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> um, but that's one unit, right? That's uh, 15 to 20 guys at most. That's tying up, what, 30 plus dudes for the Union? It's a little bit inefficient right now. And you're shooting uphill between trees, around caissons and cannons. So uh, maybe then... they should shift to a better position here. And you can see six Alabama starting to shift to the right, trying to get out of the way of the artillery, my guess. Oh, 59 for making a move up, though. I think you called this as well. They're going up the center right now towards the point of contention. The, uh, one of the Union artillerists has died to a artillery shot from CSA. Truly a spectacle. <laughs> Absolutely. Ah, so Schumacher did halt uh, on them fences, but... What do you make it count? 
I like what Davis Brigade's doing. They are uh, forming a makeshift wall with the artillery and the caissons. Um, ah, very popular strat recently. I've, I've seen a lot of uh, people start doing this in events. Um, I think it was a week or two ago in GOA. Uh, Union played on Bolivar Heights camp. Uh, we were about 20 people down, and CSA only won it in the final 30 seconds through uh, us in the last stand and then camping. Very close game, and that was through forming a little fort around the point of contention. So the strategy does seem to be getting more and more popular. Fourth New Jersey, second US Cav, and first US Sharpshooters. They are pushing down this far right side. So at 30 minutes, people can sprint and put bayonets? That is correct. Yeah, both sides at 30 uh, will be able to use both uh, sprinting and bayonets. Um, so I feel like that might change the game for this Union right. If they want to get more aggressive, try and level out the tickets, they need to uh, be a bit braver. But we are at 30 now, so will anything change? We shall see. Union starting to cap point. Union actually is kind of caught up on tickets. Is this Now is 59th New York trying to hold the point? Or are they just going to... Nope, they're just running up volleying and then falling right back to the bottom of the hill. Yeah, I believe Union said they want to avoid an early cap here. Um, again, for HRE, it's a very difficult for attackers um, just on the face of it because of the 30-minute rule. So you have set, you essentially lose up to and including 10 minutes of what could be more intense firefighting, which for next round will be very interesting. <laughs> um, but for this round, uh, yeah, eff effectively we're 10 minutes in and neither side's actually hit engaged yet. So unless Union increases the pressure, then... Uh, yeah. You also got those first five minutes of uh, at the start of the round that no one can move. That also hurts the attackers as well. It five does, is yeah. Used, so. It is, yeah. It's um, there is a few reasons for that. Um, again, it's it's based on personal opinion. If you think that's good or bad, um, my personal opinion would be, um, I kind of like the GRA. I think they do forty-two. I think that gives enough time for um, everybody to form up. Uh, anybody leading to just acclimatize themselves, get used to it. Um, but five minutes is its not bad, it's just a little bit more generous, I think. Um, especially to anyone who's maybe a little bit more unsettled at the start of the game. Indeed it is. So, 29 minutes CSA, almost about to hit engage. They're probably going to be the first one. 20th Georgia and uh, New York Volunteers shifting further left. Um, so Union's kind of abandoned the right. I'm tr intrigued to see where these Union gunners are. I think they're pointing them at second core, but those, they got to time that fuse right. Otherwise, That's a very difficult shot amongst yeah. them caissons. I'll be interested to see if they can hit this, to be honest. They, That's got to be under the minimum fuse distance as well. They're going to have to try and borrow it under that caisson or something just to hit them. They're going to fire both guns. Oh, oh, fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> that was right behind the caisson as oh, well. Oh, the second fair one play. hit the caisson. Yeah, in front of him. But that one probably would have hit too. He was the first cannon there. Give that guy a medal and tell him to help the second dude. Jesus. <laughs> <Jeez. laughs> Fair so, play. That's the engaged. Confederates hitting it. There's a CSA Rambo. I'm doxing you. Oh, he died before. Oh, but there's a team kill. Oh, no. Another CSA Rambo. Oh no, oh, you've been caught in 4K, my friend. Is he surrendering? Oh. He's surrendering. How do I surrender? Oh, okay. Uh, I accept your surrender. Come on. <laughs> Second US are very notorious for accepting surrenders. Have you ever seen them in UNC and HRE? Okay. I don't know how it always happens to them, but it does happen a lot. <laughs> <laughs> no, Lulu, no. We're shooting at the guys who are actually shooting back. Nope. Union hitting engage as well. Are they, are they, uh, uh, the I'll be honest, that's five tickets right there, Union. <laughs> I, I know. So tempting. Oh, on the other side of the map, Union's kind of pushed forward. They've taken the CSA artillery. Uh, that's a thing to miss. 59th New York, 6th Alabama, and I see 9th Corps tags as well. And that's a good move. That's a very smart move to try and kind of strangle them a bit more. Turn the field on them a little bit here. Now CSA's forced to... They're almost holding now pretty much exclusively on the hay and the barn. So that's a good move from them two groups. And the ninth core, of course, in there as well. Uh, second core is pushing out, though, back to their uh, their cannons, shooting uh, second US up by, I think, yeah, fourth New Jersey's here as well. Um, second US, Cav, looks like they're falling back. First US sharpshooters here as well. 
Oh, Hoods is making a move. They're coming down the CSA hard left on the road right now. It looked like they were exchanging fire with the sick for a long time, but now they're making a hard push down that road. Yeah, they might be coming behind these Union guys that are here and going to flank them. Victor! <laughs> Victor's calling and gets headshot. Oh, poor Victor. I imagine he was about to scream something at everyone as well. <laughs> Hickle alerting his friendlies of the Hoods Division moving behind. And it looks like these Union guys are going to fall back or try to hit them on the corner. Uh, you see Six New York falling back. Henkel was just a messenger. Uh, to be honest, Henkel's a good messenger. He has a voice you will not miss. That is <laughs> so. true. Well, the Union Cannon just hit somebody. Oh, yeah, one of the CSA guys on the gun, they were trying to hit him. Union yeah. looks like they might be capping. Or pre-capping. Uh, ninth Corps, 6 Alabama on the point. Uh, 20th Georgia now on the left side as well. And 59th New York is kind of pushing very far forward here. Uh, just running up, shooting, and getting back. It's a difficult shot against that stone wall. It's very hard to get him off that position right now. Your best bet is to charge if you want to really deal a lot of damage. I mean, they have a slight blind side. If you maybe if they diverted and hit through the right by the hay bales. So if they run directly at that, that's pretty much running into a wall of uh, who have we got here? A wall of uh, a French-Russian partnership. <laughs> they left their own DP, which. Uh, yeah, might not go too well. But, you know what? To be fair, Union have got some tickets back. They could afford a couple of risky moves like that now. Exactly. And you might as... I mean, might as well. I, I don't see any... I don't see high probability of either side going down to their last stage at this rate. Oh my gosh, Sick Fan of Amber just doing exactly what I said. They're on the hay now. They're literally going for them. They don't have too many guys, but they're making the move. I think Yakan's listening to the stream. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> this is live on the battlefield. More Union pouring in now. Uh, 59th New York here as well. And probably 9th Corps will be rolling up here as well. I, I really like the Union doing this. This is smart. This is a very good move. Because they are now using the Stonewall and shooting directly ahead. It's pretty much impossible to miss. Some of these LFL guys, they're just sitting back on uh, this one side of the stone wall. They need to get up there. Because yeah. Union can have great shots on them. Also, in case a melee ensues. But why is oh. Union just kind of falling back? Angle just executed many Union man just then. That was <laughs> impressive, Angle. Well done, sir. So, 59th New York falling back. They're using the caissons and artillery that we saw uh, Davis Brigade using earlier. Coming out of CSA spawn, you have 2nd Corps. Uh, looks like they're going to try to go on the right side of this Union force here. Zeal here, kind of scouting for a second core. Love to see that. See how well this volley is at ninth core. Mac, get over here. Looks like they're waiting for the perfect moment here for second core. Oh no, they're going to advance now. They're advancing oh. up. They have what more than twice the number. To be fair, if they can bait them Union guys to shoot early, then oh, here we go. Now they're aiming. Mac was aiming. So we got up three. Right, move forward. On me, on me. And now they're pulling back to reload, so they might not even take any uh, casualties back here. Well, to be fair, I think that's free for free on each side. So. Yeah, we even trade. <laughs> yeah. Of course, that favors um, the attackers, though, because Knife Core uh, were just in formation on their deaths, so to be fair, that's not the end of the world. Shooting a unit that size and only do some free in return, that's pretty good job. Uh, pretty good odds, just uh, as long as they can get the cards back, because otherwise that's an awful lot of dudes to be holding uh, <laughs> holding your own against. <laughs> Indeed. So, you, uh, oh, there's some close quarter counters fighting between HD and 2nd US Cat, at least these few guys that are here. You only got Crow left here. Crow should try and negotiate if I was him right now. I think that's a lose-lose right there. <laughs> <laughs> Shout for Angle, or is it Cloud maybe commanding now? Oh, you got Hyde commanding. Yeah, shout for Hyde. I'm sure he'll be uh, generous. Oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> there he goes. Six Alabama's pushing up on uh, the DV guns here. Uh, more Confederates are pulling out of this kind of barn A area. Davis Brigade and LFL pulling out of that. Looks like they're gonna, maybe going to go behind. Second Corps, who's charging out. Ninth Corps. Uh, Ninth Corps oh. trying to make an effort, but they're just outnumbered. 
If not, I've got a few more people that would probably be worth the engagement, but uh, Ooh, why are it's they a capping? bit too risky. Who's capping? Who's capping? A mix of 59th oh and 9th. It's mostly 59th New York. Why would you oh cap? That's a very uh, well, I risky guess... time to cap. I, I guess... Okay, I guess it's not terrible. I thought Union was a lot... Uh, had way more tickets than the CSA did, but I guess it's not that far off. Also, I don't think that... I don't know about you, Parker, and uh, how HRE leaders strategize, but I don't think the CSA is going to try to push the Union into last stand because USA is now considered the defenders, and they can go down the last stand and lose if they hit that, and CSA recaps. Yeah, absolutely. I, I don't think there is quite enough time, um, unless you are in a close quarters map, especially the Harpers Ferry rotations, to go from even the edge of engaged to last stand is probably too, uh, too big an ask. At least yeah. for the Union perspective, though. I think they would have been, as you just saw then, the CSA just had taken losses. If they held back on that cap, what, 30 seconds? That timer would be um, 7 minutes instead of 12. That would have been a much more, um, you know, realistic and uh, much more easier uh, hold at the point itself. So maybe a slight uh, bit too, uh, you know, anticipated a little bit early there. But um, mm -hmm. still, still very much anybody's game. You need just hits taking losses as well. So. I, I still don't. I still see probably like a 80-85% chance Union wins this. And I would one. say the uh, the aggression of these groups on the left was a sick Alabama uh, 20th as well now. 20th for a great group. That's good they've come over here to help. Um, they're really getting some tickets off of them. I think the right side is mostly just holding their own, retreating under heavy uh, pressure. But this left side is getting the tickets off of CSA right now. You saw the imbalance at the start. And since this left group started advancing, it's become dead level. So New York Volunteers now charging in a little late, though. That's being 88th New York, actually. Uh, coming in a little late there. Uh, but they do not turn the ties. A couple more six Alabama guys trying to get in here, but they're also very late. I yeah. think that cap was an accident, though. That, that was 100%. They were trying to pull off right before they capped, but... I mean, yeah. I... CSA is not going to try to push the union in the last stand. It just, especially when you don't have a steam chat, that just can be very hard to coordinate effectively. Um, Absolutely. That's another thing with Patriot, which a lot of people probably don't realize at first, is everything you see on the field, unless you can spread the message on the field, not even including in game chat, then nobody knows what you're doing. So messengers, um, communication, and coordination between units is so important. You know, if you look at the sick fella bam on the hard left, they have no idea what's happening on the hard right down there with probably. Six New York and a couple of other groups. Yeah. So the actual coordination of the units is so important. If, I mean, yeah, I think Union's job with this is just Union has to knock both sides down to breaking in this counterattack phase. And I mean, it'd be beautiful for them. I... Yeah. Yeah, I agree entirely. Even if Union loses the point, as long as they lose the point with it level at breaking, breaking, then they have 20 minutes. That's more than enough time for what they need to do. One big hard push probably through the either flank, but I'd say through the left if it goes breaking, breaking. And they can secure that point, no problem. So as long as Union can hold their own for the next, well, at most eight minutes, but probably realistically five, try and get them down to breaking at the same time. Yeah, I think they've got this one in the bag. 20th Georgia kind of pushing a little further forward, 88th New York with them. Um... They're being smart though, they're holding just at the top of the hill. They're going to take a few hits. Um, as more CSA appears in front of them, I'm sure they'll probably pull back. But uh, they're trying to just keep the pressure on, knowing that they're the attackers. You know, you've got to keep the pressure on. You can't lay off and, uh, and just completely surrender the ground here. I'm kind of surprised CSA is not trying to recap right away. The longer they leave it, the worse it gets for CSA. Uh, exactly. if, they, if they all massed up in one position, um, such as next to the bar on that stone wall, they could all mass there and flood forward. Um, but right now, it looks like half of them are going back to their hard left flank to almost safeguard the artillery. And half of them are hanging around by the hay bales still. Yeah, there's, there's no good reason to be passive as the defenders in a counterattack. No reason. Absolutely. The, the, the premise of getting tickets back is pretty much everything you're going for as the team counter-attacking. Uh, in a sense, in, in fact, it's ironic because you almost don't want to kill too many of the attacker if you're behind on tickets because of the tickets you'll get back 
What you can do is if you recap early, especially as I say while you're behind, then your ticket gain is worth the early and aggressive move to recap, and then you can fall back and reconsolidate. Yeah, and you keep that black timer going too, which is the big thing with counterattack. Everyone's just losing tickets, and that black timer's not going down, and that's what you need as a defender. So uh, exactly, I I don't know if every all the CSA regs just wanna like go together in and they're trying to communicate that with runners and it's just taking a while but oh, 59 for pushing just under your screen on the left eagle 59 just down here put making a big move again they caught uh they caught the unit napping here db was just standing there again another good uh few tickets off of csa that's a good move from 59 just keeping that movement up like that sure csa do recap they'll get their tickets back but I think the more they're scaring them with these like hit and runs, you see the less the CSA is coordinating. Like, look at how split they are right now. now. I don't think they're kind of coordinating for a central push on the point, because I think second core is sitting right underneath the point, pretty much, just off of it, in fact. If they go like 20 yards forwards, they would actually start capping right now. But instead of that, they're sitting on the fence still shooting. JD looks like they're moving up with three guys. A couple more. Here comes LFL officer. So maybe CSA is going to try to recap now, maybe? Oh, JD guys are just falling back. I Maybe HD is moving around so they can try to get back on the point, but I don't know. Now the guys on the very far left of LFL, they're going to keep on walking on and off the point if they go literally like five yards left now. Oh, never mind, they're going back. <laughs> they ignore what I said. But they could cap, this, this is the thing with the point of contention. A lot of people look at the flag point and they think, oh, we have to get under it, right? All of the flag points are zones, they're not single points. So the actual point of contention is bigger than you think it is on, on many maps, actually. So the CSA units that are holding at the top of that straight fence by the hay, if they literally shifted 20 yards down, probably, uh, sort of where them down fences are, actually, uh, where they start breaking up a bit, they could start capturing without too much risk. This is... And CSA, the longer they take two, Union might start thinking, hey, we can just hold this for a couple minutes just to win the game now. So I, and Union's not even remotely trying to defend it. Sure, you might lose tickets, but I mean, you'll regain those right away after you cap, so. Yeah, exactly. No I, do, reason. I do feel bad for the JB boys here. They had a limber flipped <laughs> that I'm looking at right now. Schumacher is standing on the cannon. He's now running to his officer, probably to try and work out where the ammo's going to magically appear from. <laughs> as it stands right now, they are a little bit down. Oh, excuse me, sorry, they do have that limber further back as well. But that's one limber for two, three inches. And they burn through that quite quickly unless they get another one down here. Yeah, only three shots left. Oh, it's kind of cool that you can see how many shots are left in Spectator. I've never, never really looked at that. Oh, neither have I. It looks like, though, that's just canister. It's on the far right, and there's now two. So, uh, yeah, they're very hampered by what they can hit right now. So a couple of good fetters on point capping. They hate breaking, but that's not really going to mean a whole lot in the moment. It looks like these guys are intentionally capping. Half from JD, half from second core. More second core guys going on there. And it looks like the 59th New York is going to pull off their left side and try to stop it. Oh, this is actually 6th Alabama. That's very smart from Jack. And if he can kill them very quickly now. They don't even see him, too. Oh, uh, they got it. Gentlemen. They've got it. Very Union nice might be able Jack to just hold and win this. They've done their job there, to be honest. A few more ticket kills, and they're now down to three and a half minutes to recap. That, that was a very smart uh, move from JD, but Sick Fell Alabama were aware to it and neutralized it very quick. LFL's pushing out to the right side, going back to their cannons. Looks like CSA is going to try to go out. I don't know if they're trying to cap. It looks like they are. HD moving out. The rest of the Union should start moving up here because Union can definitely hold for the next couple of minutes. Absolutely. To be honest, if I was Union now, don't bother with the hard right. Get yourself fixed up around the orchards, which the um, the gentlemen of the 6th Alabama, 20th Georgia, 9th Corps, they, and 59th, of course, have all secured for you. And just form a rough sort of concave shape, like a, like a part of a circle arc. As soon as they come in, just start lighting them up. I don't think they have to do anything smart here anymore. Just hold in a straight line. This is why I love the 20th Georgia. They are perfect for this job. You can see them literally on the point in double ranks. What a beautiful regiment right there. And they just won't let anything come near them. <laughs> and now the whole union's moving up as well. Look at that. Six coming up. Fourth New Jersey's coming up. Second US is coming up. This is a very good move from the union here. 2.20 on the clock. Man. 
Union's shooting them up too, the CSA. Every CSA that's popping out of these hay bales. You can just see all the dead bodies uh, by the DB's artillery thing, but I mean, Union's just shooting them all up. This is. Yeah. CSA had so many opportunities to cap this point, and they just waited till the end and. Uh, oh! The, price. <laughs> the JB artillery boys in trying to retrieve another cannon got hey. cornered by the LFL. No! Oh, no! They're all gone! <laughs> Look how many. I think they shifted all of the artillery boys over to this left side. But as I say that now, the L now the artillery is being charged by 4th New Jersey on the right hand flank. Some of those LFL oh, right. guys are charging the uh, JB artillery. Oh my gosh. Jeez, are they going to try and retrieve there. the cannons? There's no one there, boys. <laughs> oh, oh, let's see what the software says. I, mean, I wish counting I, the canister rounds. I wish I could understand. I believe a rough translation would sound like, "Don't worry, boys. They only have two canister, and I'm gonna rob one of them." So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here comes CSA. It looks like they're trying to get onto the point. We got a minute 15 left. Oh, that was a terrible attempt. Now they're just pulling back. <laughs> You know what? Union's got a very nice shape here. I know it's a little bit light on the right with 4th New Jersey, but they formed a ring now, perfectly almost enclosing the point like I mentioned earlier. Like an arc almost around it. As long as they can hold. Wow, this is going to be a good engagement here. Union counter-charging here. Union clearly outnumbering the CSA here. Uh, and Confederates hitting final push. 45 seconds remaining. Uh... Again, doesn't really mean anything. TSA just has infinite tickets. They don't matter if they die on the line, but... 30 seconds remaining. Union's gonna hit breaking, but again, that doesn't really matter. Um, I think Union's uh, gonna shame. win. Half the CSA is still just kind of sitting back. Uh, I was about to say that. A lot of them stayed at that stone wall, and now they're going in with 20 seconds left into the hole of the Union that survived. And Union is gonna, gonna be enough. Union's gonna charge their spawn. Six, uh, six Alabama, ninth core. Uh, they're going to try to hit CSA from behind. All the Union should just be charging CSA right now, and you can kind of see that happening. Um, and that should be game. Part wow. of your thoughts. Fair play to Union. They turned it around. Um, I think if uh, you go back to the first five or so minutes of that round, you'd say it looked very disjointed from Union. Uh, they tried to take the cannons, and um, they had a lot of a rough time doing that. But the initiative on the left flank, the... Uh, I forget all the units, but I believe 9th Corps, 59th, uh, 20th when they went over there too. Um, you know, they, they moved well. They used the advantage as attackers. And as they took that left flank, you'll probably see, uh, I think, probably some of the units that were further right almost moved more to the center. So uh, the Union essentially realized that the right wasn't going to go anywhere. The boys on the left move up. And then that ring around the point at the end there was beautiful. That was a really nice enclosure of the point. So fair play Union for turning it around. Yeah, exactly. CSA, you just got to cap. You got to recap that as soon as you can. But regardless of that, good first round to watch. And we'll see you in the second round. And here we are live on the second map. Union, unsurprisingly, has turtled. Not all the way. Um, actually, I don't know how far the Union can go back. Um, but regardless, Union's kind of turtled to start. It makes sense. The corn's vicious for the Union. Um... And they're probably going to turtle until CSA caps point. Yeah, for HRE, um, reminder from the first round as well, obviously 30 minutes, no bayonets, no sprinting. Uh, the cornfield becomes a menace in terrain, man. Like, polish the swag. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's a, it's, a crazy, it's a crazy map to try this wall on. Uh, we've never actually tried it on this map before. So uh, this is a historic moment you're witnessing first and foremost on BLN. Subscribe. Um, and yeah, uh, we'll see how it plays out. Indeed. So you have SR, DB, LFL holding near the point. They're not capping it. Uh, on the far left side, though, uh, you got 2nd Corps and HD. They're pushing very far forward in terms of the Union positioning on the far right side. Uh, you have 20th Georgia and 80th New York. Speaking of which, 6th New York switched over to the CSA side to balance things out, which is greatly appreciated. 9th Corps, 6th AL up front. Uh, behind, you have JB and 4th New Jersey, around the guns, JB being the guns. Far left side, 2nd U.S. Cav, 1st U.S. Sharpshooters, and the 59th New York uh, on the far left. I'm intrigued why Union has a group up against the corn, if the rest yeah. of their teammates are far back. 
yeah, I'm, at least for organized events, I won't lie, I'm not a fan of um, turtling so much. Um, I prefer if Union at least stayed along the fences just to, I guess, keep active and at least keep shooting. I understand why they're doing it, don't get me wrong. Minimize ticket losses, there's no real need to go in the corner. Um, that said, I feel like you either all go to the corner or you all go back, right? It's one or the other. There's no point <laughs> mixing and matching here. Um, I mean, the CSA is like barely, like slowly moving forward if they're even moving forward at all. I feel like they're, they're probably confused right now of where is the Union. They've not really heard much shots back. Um, oh, artillery just clipped them there, though. Uh, LFL just got lit. Uh, they didn't really get any kills though, the JB boys. They just knocked them down. But uh, yeah, as I was saying, the CSA infantry, I feel like they're trying to probe where they are right now. Uh, the, obvious, the obvious issue right now is, well, you're not really going to find out the answer to that question, except for if you see the uh, the boys at the fence. So I think their only solution here for CSA is you can't really shoot them. You can't get up to that fence to shoot. So go for the camp. Otherwise, you're not doing anything right now. Exactly. And I think there's no, I think there's really no downside to capping, especially no. in an event like this, unless you're up by like a half a morale stage, but. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you're absolutely correct. I mean, the, the ticket uh, recovery that Union will get back, well, if they're going to turtle like that, the CSA <laughs> should realize that if they're turtling. Probably by the time they recap, they're either going to be level or even ahead on tickets. So the recap doesn't benefit them from a ticket perspective. So they might as well force the cap to draw them in right now because the tickets situation is well, it's, it's negligible. Um, unless the CSA artillery can work out where they are, maybe start pumping a couple hits on them, then uh, yeah, CSA needs to just just say, you know what, I've got to take the point now, boys. 59th New York's moving further forward up against the fence. And I mean, CSA can cap too. And then pull off a little bit, and then when Union comes in, recaps it, then you charge in and take your lead. Sure, Union might turtle again, but you can keep repeating this process over and over again. Um. Yeah, the the Union plan as well, um, fly on the wall for the Union planning, is when they go to recap, they're going to send forward probably a single unit. I believe the discussion was 4th New Jersey. They're going to send forward to actually recap. Obviously, while it's going blue, that's going to tempt the CSA to make a move in and I think they're going to wipe out the Union, but that's when the rest of the Union will flood in. So if CSA does the exact same thing, but in reverse, if they uh, recap with a small unit first um, and then hold the rest of their guys off or something like that, you can kind of get an idea of how the Union's playing just based on this. They're not going to be over and obvious with their movements, so as long as the CSA realizes the capture is not being done by too many units, then they won't fall for the trap here, and actually, they could really flip the script on Union. So, Ninth Corps, I mean, I like LFL for Moss was trying to talk kind of quiet, but they have a little thing called a flag that's sticking out through the corn. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite visible, isn't it? I'm looking at your uh, stream right now, even from the ground, or one guy standing Why on the fence. Why are they falling post. back? This is the view of these fence mechanics now. The Union, even if they want to turtle, they can still stand on that fence if they wanted to and see where they are. I believe that's what uh, Yakin's doing right. Yep, there we go. Jacken's trying to jump on the fence and get an eye on the CSA right now. Do, how? So obviously with no Steam chat and stuff, it can make uh, communication very difficult. How far do you guys plan into the future with things? Like how many scenarios do you talk about in Cord? Or is it just like a pre-plan and then kind of figure it out from there on the field? It really depends on what unit's leading cord and what side you're on. Um, CSA coordination for HRE is always very efficient. Um, you could use the word quick, but quick would imply careless, and I don't think that's fair. So they're always very efficient with how they do things. They meet, they probably take 10 minutes total, maybe 15, and then they're out of there. Uh, Union uh, tends to be a little bit longer, depending on who's leading it. Um, Victor's very uh, meticulous, or meticulous, sorry. Um, he likes to really go into detail. Um, I think what would be more effective as a general rule is I would rather have a general plan in place and have a contingency plan for each plan and just leave it at that. But don't specify so deliberately this unit needs to be here, then move here. Almost divide it down into theaters, sort of, right? Treat it as like the regiment's in game. This regiment, this is your responsibility. Likewise, this is yours. And react to what you see. Because when you kind of like tell someone, you need to be here, you need to be here. When they're not there, the rest of the team goes, well, what the fuck do we do? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, and it all falls apart pretty quick. 
So I think a general kind of almost think of it as spheres of influence, right? Post World War Two, right? So each unit kind of takes a responsibility for an area and coordinates with at least every unit on their regiment in game level. That way you always have at least fifty percent of your side coordinating and hopefully the other side does the same. So CSA eventually cap some HD guys, I think we're capping, you can see them here. Um, there's artillery missing. TV falling back. And now it's on to using the go. And actually, there's some CSA getting very close to the 59th. That being JD, they're just kind of walking, they're taunting, except no one can see them. Uh. <laughs> it's kind of interesting looking at the map. If you zoom out a little bit, the CSA right now are mostly, there's almost two wings on either side of the point. There's the small group that's holding. And then you have two groups on the left and the right, almost ready to, I guess, push in when they're needed. But uh, right now, there's not any union going for them. Oh, actually, we do have an engagement here, though. They're going to run straight into it. It looks like 4th New Jersey. Oh, no, oh, my God, they're, they're turning left. Range. Oh, my God, they're turning left. They turned away <laughs> from them. I think Fatty just realized. There they go. <laughs> How do you not see the big freaking CSA flag in front of you? I guess I if just... you're not looking up, but wow. I don't know. I just went down to ground level, and it... It kind of sticks out, a big red thing there, <laughs> above the corner. If we oh look my at... gosh. It's quite bright, right? That's... Bright red. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't think it's yellow, but 4th uh, New Jersey now falling back. It's kind of funny, too, because those guys were whispering. Yeah, like, trying to be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. This is the other funny thing about the rules. Um, uh, you, you may remember I mentioned the 30 minute rule. Well, when the when the point's captured, the black timer isn't going down. <laughs> this is so brilliant, then the CSA should have capped right away. Because yep. you, you can't do bayonets or anything, and you're going to have so much... St wow. Yeah. It's it's uh, it's like a next level... Um, It's obviously uh, it's, a, it's something you realize as an extension of the first rule, right? But it's not an explicit thing, which is stated. So unless... If you as the uh, attackers realize that, you can in certain maps like this, I would argue, get a big benefit by capping early. Because, well, the black timer's going nowhere now. And CSA's uh, mid as cornfield, they either normally win by getting in there and getting dirty, or they win just based on the length of the game. So right now, I think CSA, by extending the game and stopping the 30-minute mark, well, they might make a difference. Oh, Fatty's going in again. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. They went the right. I think they were trying to do with his big encircling movement, but now they're cutting in a little shorter. Independent fire. Oh. Independent fire. Southwest. 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 <laughs> what? What is happening? I'm very confused watching this engagement. I'll be honest. <laughs> <laughs> they're just looking at each other. Okay, now they're now they're dying. Okay. Yeah, for... Did just about win that, it looks like. Uh, more awesome. charging happening on the uh, other side of the cord. Or maybe. No, it's just close thing. Close fighting. They're just not really reloading and shooting. They're not going in for any charges. Red's going in, though. Now, this is interesting, too, because while you're watching now, describe what's happening elsewhere. The fourth is capping, but you have a massive CSA line that looked poised, ready to take them. You have hoods. You have the sixth boys that balanced over, six New York, and you have second core looking at them. I wonder if they're going to actually push them, because they outnumber them probably five to one right now if they just go for them. Six Alabama flanking LFL JD, but some of these Union guys, 59th New York, are team killing their friendlies. Can confirm uh, three team kills, as you said that. <laughs> <laughs> so why is CSA's? They're letting them recap. This is this is strange. Oh, no, I, uh... It kind of makes sense though, because I think once they cap, CSA is going to charge onto the point and try to wipe these guys, and then get those ticket, uh, get that ticket gain. At least I that's what that I that's true. Hope. Yeah. So Fourth New Jersey, are they? Where are they going to fall back? Uh, oh yeah. Fatty's you're, going you're right towards them. Fatty, Fatty. Oh no. Oh, fatty. fatty, Fatty. Okay, he's going a better direction, but we'll. Just... It's kind of inverted his men. The issue is McCoy's going the wrong way. <laughs> we just realized. Oh, there we go. He turned out. <laughs> They're still getting hit hard on the. Oh, there goes the flag. Will I ever get it out? I think he's realized he's running further back the other way. <laughs> why, didn't, why didn't CSA try to. I don't know. We're going to see more turtling. CSA has got to gotta cap again and just keep repeating this. Except they need to charge out once Union caps because you can get ahead on tickets a little bit. 
Yeah. To be fair, we've only got 1 minute 24 roughly to uh, Bayonets go active. So, what happens for the next minute? I think CSA would be funny, or at least uh, from our perspective, it'd be funny if they get another cap in there. <laughs> force, force the Union to enter and no quicker than the double and with no Bayonets on. They can do what they just did, kind of pull out a little bit from the point and uh, go from there. It looks like they are actually going to cap it though. They're just on the edge with one of their units. Although a Union unit is now advancing directly into the point two. Being 20th Georgia, who's surprised about that? <laughs> Did the 20th Georgia guy get team killed? Uh, Flag bearer. Yes, yes. Oh, uh, two, two 20th Georgia guys just did. <laughs> 88th New York behind as well. I, I don't know why I... I don't know why some groups are pushing all the way towards the point. 20th Georgia and 88th, I don't think they should be up there. Especially when they're on their own. With a flag as well. If they lose that, then yikes. Getting it back and Bayonets will be active very soon. It's going to be very difficult. They're not actively capping either. They're... Oh, actually, as I say that, now they're going forwards. Are they going to go for the cap? Well, we're going to be 30 minutes, so if they do capture, they're going to have to hold a counter-attack with Bayonets. Red from HG was just like, in 15 seconds, boys, this game gets real. <laughs> Until this time, it's been a fever dream. <laughs> so Red's, no. yeah, he's, he's going to move HD forward. Looks like, I don't know if he's going to try to charge the Union out, but looks like HG is poised to be a little more aggressive. Is Union shooting him? Now, they're going for the edge of the corn, though, which is just out of bounds for CSA. Oh, no, excuse me, sorry, they're curving in now. I was going to say, they're heading out of bounds. But now they're going into the point area. Uh, well, oh, my gosh. You may have seen that. Second core just volleyed hoods. <laughs> Did they get any team kills? Uh, yes. One, okay. two, three team kills. As they turned right to go to the point, second <laughs> core unleashed the volley. <laughs> Beauty of the corn, gentlemen. By War of Rights, it is currently on sale. <laughs> it is indeed. Uh, I think till the 13th of July. That's when the Seam Stales go until. So, plenty of time to try it out, Absolutely. anyways. Uh, JD's also moving forward. So, Raiders 20th and 88th return. Uh, second US Cav has now decided to go out into the corn. Which, what are you doing? Get out of here, guys. Get out of the corn. I think Union is at risk of getting caught out again here. DB's going to hit their side. And the second, the rest of the second's going to run into the enemy's front if they keep going. So they are ruined. Yeah. What is second US Cav doing? Sluggy is looking around with a pistol, probably wondering why there's so many Russians around him. Second US Cav goes down. What? The I'm heck? noticing CSA is inflicting a number of team kills this round. I think it's just the by nature of the Union movements are very sporadic, so they probably don't expect. Uh, their friendies to be so near to them. Yeah. Oh, fourth New Jersey's actually going to charge here just by the point, the uh, west side. He's going to try and hit the second core from the side here. And they're going to win that pretty effectively. CSA cap. I like what Six Alabama's doing though. Uh, they're all standing up on the fence. Uh, Ohio. Oh, hi. We might have an issue here. Hoots is literally 20 yards away from fourth New Jersey. <laughs> They have uh, a the matter of hoods what, knows 10 corn stalks there. between them. <laughs> hoods knows they're there too. Hoods outnumber them quite massively here. They can hear each other as well, I'm 100% sure. That is within the proximity they distance. You can see their flags too. I, I, oh, do you know what? I didn't even think of that too. <laughs> There's no <laughs> doubt, right? Oh. No Ford's shot. going to make the great escape. Oh no, red is They're shooting. the wrong way. The, the, no, they don't know they left. They're volleying the corn. <laughs> <laughs> they get one guy, but... Oh wait. Oh, I wish... Please shoot now, please shoot now, please shoot now. I was going to say, the risk now is they think the second core are the Union. He's saying Bayonet's down, they're going to go forwards. Oh no, hold on. Friendly. Friendly. <laughs> That's a couple team kills. Oh my. It's phenomenal. On the other side of the map, a huge charge is about to occur, though. 59th New York running into LFL and JD. Uh, I don't think the CSA realized they ran into the 59th. Oh. DB's arriving late to the party, too. 
20th George is arriving even later to the party to flank him round though. This could be a series of flanks and counter flanks here. Oh my goodness, you're not kidding. They are all circling each other. Right wheel has just been called by Canada. They are looking at the CSA now. The A Apes in support. That is a weird looking CSA flag. That South Carolina flag, that why is that like pinkish red? Do you see it like that? Uh, oh yes, it's rather yeah, you're right, it's very pinky. Uh, <laughs> well, it's now pink with a spot of white because Sloth just spat on it. So there you go. <laughs> and by the way, congratulations to Major Canada on the promotion. Uh, well deserved, uh, my friend. Good job. Huzzah. So, 20th Georgia now gunning it to the point. Battle line left. Battle line left. Oh, yeah, my bad. Battle line left. You have some second core guys. Zio there, and Canada's going to charge them. <laughs> Zio freaking out. Right. <laughs> oh, don't, don't, don't. Nice job. Second core guys just sporadically kind of holding there. Uh, you do have a union group out in the distance. My guess, fourth New Jersey going down the road. HG has got to know that union's on that point. You see the cap. I'm just going to double check who this group it is. It's Fatty in the fourth New Jersey. Fatty's right, covering ground this game, I tell you. He is getting the miles in. Good job. <laughs> They're going very far. Uh, HD is slowly yeah, pushing to the point. Fourth has just hooked in though as well. They're actually diverting away from the unit they were heading towards originally. Now fourth is heading directly to the point of contention from the west southwest side. More... No, we're not. It's six Alabama charging in now to HD. As HD's charge at 20th Georgia, this is not going to be good for HD. Six New York here though, uh, and they're getting charged by 59th. Yeah, there's way too many Union there for them to survive that. The interesting thing here is Union is ahead. Obviously, CSA is now engaged. Union is recapping, but from battle ready. So they are not regaining tickets. They are merely stopping the capture timer itself right now. And there is no CSA poised to make a move on them either. All right. Will 4th New Jersey get team killed by 9th Corps guys? Let's see. Ah, oh, no. They see each other. Dang. Oh, will these guys get each other? Right now, almost the whole Union infantry is in the corn, but in various positions. So there's a little bit of a risk here if they start getting too many units caught out, because the CSA, remember, is all advancing from roughly the same area from the south side. If they start getting picked off one by one, that ticket lead they have right now will very quickly become zero. So Davis Brigade's kind of going through the core, and they're, they're about to hit 4th New Jersey. They see each other. <laughs> and fourth New Jersey is going to win that. Yeah, they did well there, but there is another U a CSA unit very close. If they hear the gunshots, if they run northeast. Who is this over here? Got JD. We've also got LFL, but it doesn't look like they're going to come to support their friends. Wow. Fair you... play to DB uh, Sergeant, by the way. Uh, Sergeant Chess just escaped with the flag. That beautiful pink and uh, pink and white flag. He has escaped. So fair play. <laughs> So, CSA just got to keep capping the point. This is going to be a long game. It, I apologize, everybody. If you are watching now, take a minute to grab a drink because we might be here for at least another 45. Yeah, Because, so. really. I mean, CSA's only play right now is to cap and then wait for the Union to come out. That's I, their only play because Union's just doing what they need to do to win this game. I mean, yeah, exactly. where's this group? Jersey, Jersey. Yeah, they're still holding out there. Yeah, this is what I mean about the turning strategy. I don't doubt that it works, and there's nothing against its viability. Um, for events, though, it does really extend the game time quite a lot on a map like this. Um, but each to their own. If it works for Union, it does work, and they get the win. On a map like Miller's Cornfield, you could say that is worth more than the strategy you use. So, fair enough. Good job, Confederate Artillery. You got one Union Artillery kill. Huzzah. Mm, fair enough. <laughs> Counter battery moments. Counter battery. <laughs> add it to the uh, add it to the script, you know. <laughs> There's a CSA flag just down. Oh, pick that up. There you go. Oh. You can do a surf flex. Go on. F for France. Go on. Hey. There you go. <laughs> I mean, oh, Fourth New Jersey's getting right into it. Now that I would say it's ill-advised. 
I think for the uh, Union right now, if you're going to go into the point when they're capturing, you need to at least do it in a large group. Because right now they're going to wipe the JD group. If that secondary group LFL comes in right now, they could easily wipe the fourth, which don't have loads. LFL's coming in here to the fourth New Jersey. The flag is down as well. For the fourth New Jersey, that is. They have lost the flag in the corn now. Strictly oh, wow. speaking, you could say that's less important given the turning strategy, but it's still a pretty annoying factor if they want to start getting the spawns when they move back into the corn later in the game. Exactly. 59th New York. Well, the first ones to push out for the Union here. We have a decent amount of movement from the CSA on this left side. Just an extra word on the Union strategy as well. Uh, from the from the pre-planning uh, meeting that they do in HRE, uh, Red suggested the tactic which he's following right now, which is Union will always try and flank mostly from this left-hand side. If you kind of imagine the map itself in, in sort of thirds, running vertically from the Union to CSA spawn, then looking from the USA side, the far left third is almost the Union's like uh, stage to counterattack from. However, if you look at the center right now, there is Union that are just simply going straight forwards. And I feel like they're about to get hit by the, uh, the uh, CSA gentlemen that are standing pretty much ready for them, actually. And they're going in all alone, too. And this is how you kill your ticket lead. Exactly. In fact, you have three separate groups of Union right now. You have a group on the Union side of the fences far right, which I believe is the second. You have the second on the Union side of the uh, fences. You have the units which just got uh, annihilated by the CSA. And then even further away to the southeast, you have a majority of the Union infantry making a very wide hook round, running parallel to the CSA's uh, fence wall now, actually. Here comes I, Red, though. He's arriving on the south side of the point any moment now. I don't get why the CSA isn't surrounding point. I mean, during the counterattack, you want to try to get everyone's tickets down, and CSA has kind of, for the most part, easily let the Union uh, get the point back. LFL caught off guard facing the wrong direction as Union pours in here and uh, wins. Yeah, it's a rather confusing uh, sequence of events right now. The CSA on the... Uh, on the um, on the defense of the point, they're very divided. You can see now that DB's arriving to try and help, but there's a lot of Union boys there. Even without loads, that's going to be quite a task to try and uh, knock them out of the point. <laughs> that is a very enthusiastic scream. <laughs> it was. And Jumbo just like shot him point blank, killed him. Somehow didn't kill Friendly, it's a good shot. Um... I appreciate this single man of DB guarding the flag while Red prowls for where he is. He knows he's there, but he can't see him. <laughs> Fighting's happening near the point, though. HD is kind of forming a bubble. Second US charging in. And second US have completely outnumbered more Union from this left side starting to pour in. Six Alabama's back again after dying last time doing this. And now they're going to go in and die again. We can see CSA is nearly ahead on tickets now. That is a very good point. The the advantage Union had, it wasn't much, but the last few moves by Union into the corner has really cost them quite dearly. They now have pretty much lost their lead in tickets, which means each time they recapture, they will be getting some back. But it's also much more difficult to play from that uh, perspective because you know that you're behind until you can get that point back. 20th Georgia, 88th New York. I assume there's got to be 159th. No, there's no. Oh my! Here. I'm so sorry to interrupt. One of the Union flags ran straight into the 6th New York. Normally, boys, that's all right. We're Union, but not today. So unfortunately <laughs> for you, there goes the Union flag. So Union's gonna cap, and these HD guys. Ninth Corps is now charging in. I, I'm so confused. Like now 59th New York's a... getting in here now. Yeah, there's a... It's very sporadic right now. There's actually another Union flag running by the 6th New York. They hit it again! There's another Union flag claimed by the 6th! Well done, boys! <laughs> <laughs> so, points recapped. Both sides about taking losses, though. Um, Confederates, they... 
who is these guys? Who is this Rambo? Oh, it looks like he's just AFK. Um, like, if I was from Moss, I guess they're going for this flag, but I would gun it to point, especially because you know some unions on it. I don't know how that happened, but about eight gentlemen of the uh, Sick New York just managed to wipe out a lot of the union that were trying to regroup on the edge of the corn. They knocked them out, they put a bit of a ticket then into them, and now the rest of the union have actually fled. And Sick is now putting back towards CSA spawn, so fair play, guys. Uh, did it with like six dudes there. Well, I'm biased, of course. Their, uh, <laughs> their reg leader must be doing a good job then. Uh, some could say he's a very good delegator and he knows <laughs> what, who to put in positions of power. There you go. Annoying voice, you... though. Can't stand him. Not joking. <laughs> So Union has three down flags near their fence line, and they're not getting, they get one. What the heck? Get these two flags. Yeah, it's a bit of a symptom of, uh, well, it's potentially a sign of um, Union slipping up a bit here. The more them flags die in the corn, suggests the more they're being careless in the corn, which is really where Union needs to be safe. The only time they really want to be in that corn, given their current strategy, is to, uh, retaking the point. And if need be, getting the flags back out. But right now, it's two down still. And uh, actually, CSA is going to move on to the down flag, so I don't think they're getting them anytime soon either. Nope, they missed their chance. Davis Brigade moving near here. Are they. CSA might just try to push Union down to uh, breaking. There's a private axle, though, trying to get oh. this flag. Oh, no. Oh, he's been spot oh did he, did he leave spot? the game? <laughs> he just <laughs> went forward rather than Here die. comes Fourth New Jersey. <laughs> They're going to hit DB as DB kind of starts running away. DB uh, gets halfway, both sides down, taking losses. Alec oh, oh, wait, God. Axel's back in. Wait. What? Axel what? just did the ultimate bait wait, and what? switch. I need... What? Where'd he go? Can we get a rewind on that? <laughs> what I, just I am, I'm going to look at that again at, after that. Oh, what? He, like, disappeared. That was perfection, Axel. You that deserve was... to be at least a corporal. Congratulations. Exactly. You know what? Make him a color sergeant. He deserves that flag. <laughs> Leave exactly. it in his hands, man. It's safe. Wow. Do we are back at level playing field. Though. Taking losses, wish. taking losses. Is. Yes, Axel. <laughs> he better get a standing ovation from the 59th there. Come on, boys. Stap him up now. Come on. Bruh. Bruh. Ah, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> wow. When, when Red watches this back, Red, and if you hear me right now, that man just did literally the impossible. He, he, he shapeshifted through the corn and escaped with a flag. <laughs> so I thought CSA was going to be more aggressive, but CSA is kind of sitting back. Um, tap the point or be aggressive, but choose one of those two things. Exactly. Oh, they're shooting from... Did they? Did CSA volley through their guys? Did... Uh, we have one team kill notification right now. Um, I didn't see who shot, but it is a second... Core person who killed a friendly, so potentially. Yeah, was. second core just shot through uh, AFL and JD. Ah, uh, yes, they killed a man from JD. So <laughs> only one though. So. Hey, fair enough. Corn moments right there. <laughs> <laughs> I think um CSA has a. Do they have buck and ball on the Texans on this regiment? I I can look it up. I believe they. Uh, I think First Texas might have buck and ball for this map, which obviously for. We taking the point is a good uh, is a good thing for CSA, but if they're firing like that with friendlies nearby, then ouch. So CSA artillery is focused on counter battery, which I interesting. Um, hmm. I mean, I guess their artillery is the most uh, stable thing you're gonna get, and yes, First Texas does have buck and ball on this map. All yeah, right. That uh, helps the CSA even more in the corn, which again, that's where Union is potentially at their weakest, so... I do wonder if the battery for CSA would be better placed going for the infantry here, though, because they know each time that they're going to the fence before the counter-attack. And you can... I know it's a hard sight, but you can probably just about see the smoke, because a lot of the Union are actually standing on the fence to fire. So if the CSA, like, dialed in on the edge of that fence, Given the fence mechanics, they, they screw around with the uh, information status a lot too. You'd actually get some skirmishing tickets off them too. Yeah, I mean, unless artillery... I mean, artillery might not know. I mean, someone from infantry probably has to communicate it. Uh, Fourth New Jersey is going out though. They are going to try to retake the point here. They're going alone again or...? Yeah, they're, they're kind of whispering. CSA's kind of yeah. pushed up close to the Union fences. 
some CSA moving in from spawn. Uh, that being the Davis Brigade. Oh, Fatty is running headfirst into CSA. His line is actually diverging away from him. <laughs> oh. <laughs> this could be a bit of an issue for Fatty. The flag is following Fatty too. Oh, now it's diverted. But Fatty is all by himself with a pistol, telling his guys to get oh. them. <laughs> Bit of a problem saying get them, fatty. You do it. Half decent volley though from the fourth there. It's just a shame that their glorious lieutenant was not with them for that moment. They eventually though, fatty. Take solace in that. As CSA looks like they're trying to search the corn, maybe. Uh, never mind, they're not heading that direction. Oh, Davis Brigade looks like they're heading. Oh, sorry, that's LFL. Alpha. Alpha's gonna slam right into them. Oh dear. Fatty just respawned as well. Ah, oh, they're all caught reloading. Oh. Guys, stop reloading! The moment you hear a shot to your front in the corn, pop that bayonet down. Nothing else matters. <laughs> Break off your load. So oh dear. And there goes, the, there goes the fourth with a flag. Get out. I don't know if his stamina will get him all the way there. So Union trying to shift far left side. On the far right side, though, we have Union. Um, second U.S. Cav getting a Rambo. He was looks like he was just Open AFK defense, though. This is a little bit of an issue for the Union. They keep doing this very diverted split on the point where, as I said from the start, the main aim was to attack from the Union left. Fair enough. If the fourth and second go right, but I imagine it'll be a lot more effective if they at least synchronize together. Because right now they have two roughly ten-man units, and each time they're getting a unit roughly their size, but then they're getting munched by the big units like you know the LFL or someone. I don't really know how much uh, how much ground they're making up in the process each time. Wow, beautiful volley by 59th. Oh, that was nice. Like LA, Very guys. nice. Um, DB or LFL? No, that's DB. This second flag is throwing me off. But <laughs> yeah. DB is gonna try to hit the 59th. Little do they realize to their right though, there's a couple more Union groups. Four minutes left till this counterattack phase ends. Right here, right here. DB ran mostly right between the middle of the two Union groups. Now, actually, the 59th are the ones with the momentum into that charge now. I believe they might have the, the DB here, even though DB caught them, technically. DB were just uh, 10 yards too far to the right, though, and they kind of stood there spinning around thinking, we know they're here, but <laughs> we can't see them. More fighting happening on the other side. Uh, second US Cav going in with 6 AL now backing them up. They win that charge as well. Um... So Union winning on the point again. Two CSA groups still kind of out and about, I think. Uh, LFL on this left group. And then to the right side, we have HG who's about to slam in the knife course. Quick timing. Oh, hi, guys. Go ahead, go ahead. Oh, dear. Go, 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 go. oh, dear. That's HD this. and HD missed it. Mm. But nonetheless, they got it. Uh, who's turning around? Is this 4th New Jersey? Nope, 6 Alabama's turning around. They're trying to hit HD from the side. HD, 6 NY going for the point, meeting up with LFL. 6 Alabama's are falling back completely. CSA converging on point right as the rest of the Union from this left side's closing in. It's an incredibly dangerous position for Union right now because half their force is not actually going for the point. And they only have two minutes thirty for the guys that aren't in the corn to get their, you know, get themselves together and get in to help. Because the guys that are here now are about to start getting hit pretty heavy. The four for again trying a hard right flank. They're going around the right with Fanny again. They need to probably get there fairly soon, because I imagine them CSA boys are poised to make a move. Right. And you have the CSA reinforcements hitting the CSA fence now. I think it's now or never for the fourth to get in there and try and wipe out this unit. Fatty's kind of going off by himself again. <laughs> fourth is diverting again. They do not like following their glorious Texan leader. <laughs> maybe they, uh, I mean, he's saying go a direction, but maybe not saying... Um to the degree at which direction you go. But 4th uh, New Jersey, 6 Alabama pouring in. They're winning that. More CSA coming in from spawn. A minute and a half left on this counterattack, but Union is going to cap the point. Regardless, though, this is great for CSA. They, CSA needs to charge out, put them in breaking, and then uh, cap point. Now, the issue for Union is they are very close to breaking. The best thing they could probably do 
is fully get out of the corn, try and avoid going breaking, and they might be able to push for a last stand recap when CSA do take it. I don't think they're going to be able to last for 20 minutes without either one single cap of the point or not letting them cap at all while they go into breaking inevitably in the next few minutes. With that said, they've just been charged. I think that plan is now off the table. Davis Brigade charging in. You also had 9th Corps charging in CSA losing. Union on this screen starting to counter charge. It's a mix of everyone. Both sides about to hit breaking. 20th Georgia's pursuing, though. If JD just... JD, just go a little forward. You'll get it. Uh, what Union group is holding back? 59th New York's kind of holding back here. I mean... Union's gonna hit breaking. There's too many Union out here. Oh, Confederates are bringing. I thought that'd be. Cool. <laughs> Almost, like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Second U.S. Here's Cav the... in 20th Georgia got to get out of here. Here's the thing: is as I say, if there is extreme discipline and the whole Union gets out right now, you can play for the last stand recap. But yeah. literally, I think Union is probably two or three deaths off of breaking right now. Yeah, so I mean, anyone left in the corn ruins that plan, and CSA will cap and instantly win. Even if they pull back all the way, CSA can just go up to the fence line and definitely get a couple kills and get you down to breaking. So, I... Absolutely. What would be smart is the CSA, they start capturing. Actually, as I said, this is actually a Union Rambo coming to roughly towards the corn. Will he just keep going? Sick Alabama private. If he dies, that might be enough to spin it, you know? He's kind of looking towards the down flags, I think. But if he goes for that flag, Union Sir. might slip into breaking. Sir, your flag does not matter. Sir. And he's still going. Sir. I, I think that guy might be enough for you need to hit breaking, you know. This could be a ridiculously pivotal moment based on one player here. The division realizes the opportunity. Oh, he's going he's gonna to keep going. It's quick time. Why is he not in melee mode? Oh. Oh, no. There could be another engagement about to happen here between Hoods and the gentleman of the 4th New Jersey. Why Union is actually forward? going into the point as well. This will literally cost the Union the win if Red goes in now, I believe, because they no, will hit breaking. No, Union's going to hit breaking. It's an inevitability. CSA won't cap till then. So Union, I think, has to go in and try to push CSA down the final push before they hit last stand. The problem is, is since you aren't in steam comms, you have to communicate that effectively with your team. And Red's just kind of going in by himself. I guess you have some more Union behind. Hopefully the rest of the Union comes in to assist. 20th Georgia, 8th, uh, 8th New York here, but... They need to be very quick is the issue here. Because as you say, the comms are so split. Now that the whole force is in breaking, Union has to do a very careful defense of a field where you can't see most of it. I think it would have been smarter there if the whole Union stayed away from the point, stayed out of the corner, let them cap it with you in taking losses, and then you can go for the last damn cap. But you're so close to breaking, I don't think CSA would have capped. I mean, maybe they would have, but... They were. They were slowly filling it. They were slowly filling it there. I think they would have probably go for the pre-cap. Um, but then again, we saw, like, first round, a unit uh, took a little bit too long to move, and they went ended up capturing it. As I say, extreme discipline may be slightly unrealistic, but still very viable. And now CSA is actively capturing. Union's got to make a move right now, really, because their reinforcements are coming in. I think it's literally just, now or never. Union's starting to take it back, though, as they move more in. CSA is going to win. Union's got to try to knock them down the final push first. Union's a little head on tickets. So dying out of line is very pivotal here. This is why I hate is Union. Defending uh, Meadows Cornfield on breaking, it's just it's too difficult, to be perfectly honest. And Flamas leading the LFL to go in right now. Don't forget the Texans have Buckingham as well. This is this is perfect for CSA, knowing the Union has to be in front of you, and they can't see you, but you have a Buckingham each time you're firing with at least half your team. That point CSA is capping. Still going in favor, but a lot of CSA is starting to move in right as the last. Uh, I shouldn't say last, but a Union group now moving in. What's interesting is the CSA is slightly holding some of their guys. I think it's second core, actually. They're holding on the rear side of the point. The Union's on their side of the point. So it's neck and neck in terms of the people on point, but they're not actively engaging each other in the middle. They're trying to just outnumber the other side right now. 
which obviously for the defenders is much riskier because as you can see now it's actually starting to tick in favor of CSA. They now have to go forwards or it's game over. Nice. Union is though not moving. Now they're charging. Now they're charging. Can they do it? Their whole team is in charging though, it's very spread oh, out. Oh no, they are so- yeah, you're, yeah, I was about to say the exact same thing. The Union is half committing here, but they are slowly winning. The thing is, look at the ticket bar. By the end of this engagement, any moment now, you're gonna hear the last stand just call out. The Union needs to knock on the final push right now. Uh... CSA reinforcements are arriving quickly with the bayonets down as well. This is going to become a literally two streams meeting in the middle. We won, we won. Who's saying we won? Oh, a Union guy is. CSA's got to go down the final push. Union's got to make this happen. There you go. Two minutes twenty. Oh my. The Union needs to get a very strong front line set up very quickly so everyone that you see here on my screen that's all the union has left the csa is just gonna kind of go in right away you have a lfl actually flanking left a bit here this could be a very smart move if they kind of start cutting in to hit them reinforcements they're heading right for them actually they're cutting them off now that's a very smart move from lfl because all of the union almost guaranteed just have bayonets right now and as uh as eagle just said they don't have respawns LFL is really the only group engaging here for CSA. Union Artillery, I think, team killing their own guys. Love to see that. Um, well, wow. actually, the CSA is consolidating on their fence. They're, I think they're massing for a push here. They're not being too desperate about it. You can see them all holding on the fence line. I think they know that they can take this point with a minute 15, but they need the whole force together with Buck and Ball. And now they're going forwards. You know what? That could be a, that could be a change for this, uh, for this force. Because if they kept streaming in, I think it would have been 50-50. But with that, just literally, like, what, 30 second wait? Look at the flood of CSA coming in now. If half of them are buck and ball, that will shred the Union in half. Here we go. That CSA flood is still coming in. That is an absolute bloodbath right now. Oh my. CSA's taking it, though. Are indeed not a lot of Union remaining, and I think that should be game. I mean, I yeah. guess you have Union artillery, which can very easily change the tide of battle. Uh, but um, they did get a couple hits then, but you need the bodies on the point. It's the issue right now. Second U.S. Cav, the only Union infantry remaining. Oh, sorry, Lewis. Oh, Sluggy's about to go down. He's taking one stab, will he take another? This uh, flag bearer for the Union just needs to charge in. Flags need to... Flags need to distract enemy infantry, that's their job, but... Two seconds remaining, one... And that... Sluggy's running away. Sluggy's running away. JP officer is in the mix, it's artillery, he's going in! Oh, he didn't get far. <laughs> Bless him. <laughs> Well, CSA of one, we're just waiting for these last couple of Union guys to die or CSA to cap. Um, yeah, formality now. Maybe if a nuke spawned in the middle of the map. Mm -hmm. That shot ricocheting off the ground. That would be a good time for some Union man to uh, spawn an AR-15 or something. Of course, of and, course. And uh, start doing your thing. I wouldn't see it coming. <laughs> they definitely would not see it coming. Wait, let me quickly get on the admin commands. I might be able to save this game. No, I'm joking. <laughs> wow. They're still trying to load these cannons, but... Yeah. <laughs> Parker, your thoughts for this round? Uh, what a game. Um, as I said at the start, we've never tried this specific map with that rule set before. Um, you saw the Union um, trying a, what's normally called a turtling strategy, so a very defensive uh, staying away, and then going in to retake the point. Um, that was a great idea. That's what they should do at the start. I think the issue became when a few too many Union units were flanking or trying to get into the corner to recap. Um, and they lost the advantage they had in tickets. While it wasn't much, if CSA went final push uh, at the time the Union went last stand and vice versa, 
I feel like that may have just been enough for Union to win that game. So a few too many Union casualties, I think, in the corn. We'll be able to see actually on the map as I'm speaking now. And um, I think the Union could have won that. But fair play to CSA. They noticed that they needed to cap the point to turn it. And uh, when they needed to capture it and uh, eliminate the Union, they did so. But shout out to Union. They did get the casualties on them. Look at that for Millers. That's pretty impressive. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, with that being said, thank you all for watching this event today. If you enjoyed, please like, comment, share, subscribe. For more, hit the join button underneath the video to get videos before everyone else and other perks. And we'll see you in the next video. Have a good night. So, what were your thoughts?